Hi, this is Russ Buecher from Control My Nikon. In this training video, we're going to take a look at how you can connect Control My Nikon to your Nikon DSLR and how you get the cabling set up and be able to troubleshoot any connection problems. So it's very easy to get connected to your camera. All you need to do is take the USB cable that you received with your camera and plug it into your computer and then plug the other end into your camera. And start up Control My Nikon, you just go to the Connection tab here and then click on Connect. And if you watch the status there, it shows it connected. And when it connects successfully, it automatically flips you over to the Settings tab. Here we have some other tabs in the system here, but it's going to bring you over to Settings. Now, if you want to disconnect, all you need to do is go to the Connection tab and hit Disconnect. You can also just turn the power button off on your camera and that'll also disconnect it within Control My Nikon. So let's try connecting again. You see the status here, you go connect and it's connected. Now if we go back here you can see there is a list of cameras and currently I'm connected to a Nikon D7000 but here's a list of all the supported cameras. So you just pick the camera that you are using and press connect. Okay, I'm just going to disconnect and let's talk about troubleshooting problem connections. Now, there's a lot of moving parts in between Control My Nikon and your camera. There's your Windows operating system, Nikon drivers, Microsoft drivers, Control My Nikon itself, and the firmware on your camera. Sometimes they do not talk properly. In addition to that, there's different hardware variations. But we have some things we can do to troubleshoot your connections and try to get it all working. What you can do is just click on this right here, unable to connect. It's going to bring up a list of things to check. This is the built-in help system. Uh, one of the first things you need to check out is uh, your cables. Now, it's preferable to use the cable that came with your camera. Uh, it has a noise filter usually on the end. It's this uh, bump that's on it. And when you connect that into your camera, it helps reduce the amount of noise that is on the cable. You can use non-Nikon cables if you like, but it's at your own risk uh, because you, know, you can buy a replacement USB cable for a dollar at a dime store nowadays, but I'm not too sure I would trust the quality of that I'm uh, hooking up to my multi-thousand dollar camera. So it's all up to you what you want to hook up to. We do have some people using active USB cables. These are powered USB cables that are very long. They go over the standard 16-foot limitation of a USB cable. So by doing that, they're able to really mount their camera a long ways away from the computer. Um, but it's the best thing to try if you're having connection problems is revert back to the original cable and only try another cable if you've run out of other options. The next thing to check is make sure that connector is seated properly in the port on the side of your camera. It's a very small port and they can wiggle around in there. And some cameras, they don't seem to seat in there well. You know, some people have had problems where... Uh, their USB cables being yanked out of their camera and uh, it bends things just a touch but that gives connection problems so just wiggle it around a little bit see if you can get it in there properly and also try not to run a cable through any kind of USB hub that includes monitor hubs and keyboard hubs or powered hubs or unpowered hubs because they may not be functioning properly and may not provide enough power to your camera for a, a proper connection some other things you could try are listed right here. So first of all, obviously make sure you have the correct camera listed here. And the next thing is take note of the green LED on the back of your body when you attempt to connect. If you see it flickering green, that means at least that your computer can see the camera and your cabling is likely okay. Next is to ensure that the camera battery has enough power on it. Now it doesn't have to be fully charged, but it can't be at the bottom either. If your LCD panel on your body is flashing and indicating low battery condition, then there's just no way that Control My Nikon can connect to it. So charge up that battery or use the Nikon AC power adapter. And some cameras are worse than others for power consumption. D700s can really burn through a lot of power for some reasons. My D7000 will last you know, three to four hours continuous shooting easily uh, in live view even uh, when it's tethered. Next thing to check 
especially if you have an older camera, is to ensure that the USB mode is set to PTP. On older cameras such as a D300 and D40 and D80s, if you go into the menu on the camera LCD, you'll find this USB mode. And you can select between mass storage and PTP. And you need it set to PTP. On newer cameras like this D7000, you won't find this in the menu at all because Nikon has defaulted it to PTP and only PTP. You can't change it, and that's good. So uh, just check if you have an older camera. Now, if you have one of these cameras and you're on Windows 7, then try setting the compatibility mode to Vista SP2. In fact, you'll need this for sure with these cameras uh, because the Nikon drivers do not work properly in Windows 7. You have to trick them into thinking they're on a Vista computer, and then it'll talk properly to those cameras. Now, another test you can do is just try powering on your camera. And in Windows XP and Vista and Windows 7, you'll notice a little icon pop up on your taskbar um, or a window will pop up. That's not Control My Icon stuff, but that's just an application that runs within Windows. And that means that the Windows operating system can see your camera just fine. The cable's okay, it has enough power, and the drivers are installed. But if you try to power up your camera and that does not appear, then that usually means that the digital still camera driver has not been installed properly on your computer. On the initial installation of a lot of XP computers and sometimes on Vista and even some on Windows 7, sometimes this is not installed by default. And when you turn on your camera, your operating system will normally detect that it hasn't installed this and will attempt to do it. But if it has not been installed and you're not getting this separate Windows application that pops up, then uh, you'll need to try and get this installed on your computer. Next thing you could try is delete all the images on your camera memory cards. Now, if you have a lot of images on there, you may notice that during your connection attempt, when you look at the back of your camera, you'll see the green LED lights on for quite a long time. It could be on for several minutes. And that means that the Nikon firmware is trying to sync up images with the drivers. So this can cause a problem during a connection. There's really only one solution, and that is to remove the memory cards or reduce the amount of images on those memory cards. Once you do that, then it'll connect faster and complete the connection. Uh, the other solution is just wait for it. Now another thing that could have occurred is that the Windows Image Acquisition Service is not properly running. This is something built into Windows, and this is basically a program that runs in the background in Windows provided by, by Microsoft that uh, attempts to acquire images from imaging devices. So, um, but sometimes it fails, and sometimes it looks like it hasn't failed, but it has failed. So, the Nikon drivers need to talk to this service. If it's not running properly, it will not connect. So I'll show you how to find that, and what you can do is go to the Task Manager and um, find a list of your processes and uh, services. There we go. Now the service you're looking for is this one right here. This is a Windows 7 64-bit system I'm on, but uh, XP and Vista has this as well. Windows Image Acquisition Service. Now you can't restart it from here. It says it's running, uh, but that doesn't really mean anything. Uh, we'll go to services here and we'll find it in the list. There it is. And it says it started and it's automatic. Now what you can do uh, on some computers you may find this is not running. It's blank. So what? Uh, just right click and go start. But even if it says it's running it could have basically crashed as it talks to Nikon drivers. So you could tell it to restart. And it doesn't take too long. And now you can go back and try to connect to your camera. I'm not too sure why this occurs. We're still researching this, uh, but it, it can be annoying. Some computers are worse than others on this. I think it has to do with uh, just how the computer is configured when the operating system is installed. Another thing to try is to just try powering down the power on your camera and then rebooting your computer and try it all again. And if that doesn't work as a last measure, you can just try reinstalling Control My Icon. 
and you might try installing it as the administrator. Normally people don't install software administrator on their personal computers, but if you have a computer where your security for your user account is really locked down by the system administrator, it could have prevented some parts of the Control My Nikon software from being installed properly. To install as an administrator, you just right click on the installer icon and select run as administrator. And uh, you may not have enough privileges to be able to do that and may need to contact your admin to be able to install it. So that's how you connect to your camera from Control My Icon. And we have some troubleshooting tips here. If you have any problems and none of this works, just send us an email and we'll try and help you out. Thanks for watching.